This video is a Postgres developer's guide to updates and deletes in ClickHouse. So we've got a ClickHouse database containing Stack Overflow data that has been synced across from Superbase using ClickPipe's Postgres CDC. So if we want to connect to this database, we can go to the connect page and I'm going to change it to say connect with native. And you can see it then gives me instructions about how I can connect to my ClickHouse Cloud database from my machine. So I download ClickHouse and then if we scroll down a bit, you can see it's got the connection section. And what I'm going to do is copy that onto my clipboard and then I'm going to paste it into my terminal. Don't worry about that password. I've changed that one already. I'm going to add in a couple of extra options as well. And then we've got our ClickHouse client ready to go. I'm going to switch over to the Stack Overflow database. And then I want to just show you the, a table called posts that we created earlier. So unlike Postgres, which does updates and deletes in place, ClickHouse does versioned inserts. And that can be done with the replacing merge tree table. And so the idea here is that ClickHouse is going to remove duplicate entries with the same sorting key. So in this case, it's ID. And it will, but it will remove those in the background by merging parts together. So it's going to be eventually consistent in that respect. And it will keep the one, the row, which has the highest, in this case, PeerDB version. So you can see that's passed in as one of the parameters to the replacing merge tree. The other thing to keep an eye on is that if we delete a record, that's also an insert, but it will have that PeerDB is deleted flag set to one. We're going to learn how to work with this table by writing a query to count the number of posts. So it's a reasonably simple query. We've applied some inserts, updates, and deletes to that Postgres database, and then they've been synced across to ClickHouse. After doing all that, there are 2,387,065 records in the posts table in our Postgres database. So we should see the same number in ClickHouse. We're going to start with the simplest way of counting. So select count start from posts. You see that comes back. 2,387,075. So it's 10 too many at the moment. Now, the first thing that we've forgotten to do is we need to filter on that PDB is deleted flag and make sure it's set to zero. Because if it's set to one, those records have been deleted. So we don't want to include those in the count. Running that query, we're now down to 2,387,071. So we've got rid of some of them, but not all of them. The other thing that we need to do is we need to use the final modifier or clause just after posts. When final is specified, ClickHouse logically merges the data before returning the result. And all data transformations that happen during merges for the given table engine are also applied. So we need to use that in this case. Using final basically removes any duplicates that we may have from updates to or deletes off any of the posts. Next, let's look at ways to not need the where and final clauses in every query we write. Some techniques will automate removing only the where filter or the final modifier, while others will automate removing both. The first way is the final setting. So we can get rid of that final clause from the query itself, and then we can provide a query setting with final equals one instead. And you see we get back the same result. An alternative way of doing this is to set that setting for the whole session. And then we don't need to include it in the query. Again, you see we get the same result. Let's turn that setting off. Another approach is a row policy. A row policy is a filter that determines which rows a user can read from a table. So we can create our row policy. We'll call it CDC policy on the name of the table, posts four, and then we provide our query. So select using PDB is deleted equals zero. And then we can say two, and we could provide a bunch of users who this applies to. In this case, just to simplify the video, we'll just say it's to everybody. And then if we run our query, this time select count star from posts with just final, you see we get the same result. And this technique saves us from filtering for deleted rows, but we still have to specify final each time. Let's drop the row policy and look at the next technique, which is a view. A view is effectively a saved query. So we can say create or replace view, posts view as, and then we can just put in our whole query with the final and the where filter in there as well. And then we can query that post view as if it was any other table. And you see, we get the correct result. If our posts table accrues a lot of rows, we might find that having the final in the query becomes slower than we'd like it to be. If that's the case, we have one final technique we can use, the refreshable materialized view. A refreshable materialized view is a query that runs on a schedule and writes the results to a table. So we'd be trading off data freshness for query speed. So we'll create a new table called deduplicated posts, and it needs to have the same structure as our posts table. And then we're going to create our materialized view. We're going to say it's going to refresh every one hour, two, and then that 
that table, deduplicated posts, and then we put in our SQL query. You could have this refresh more often, but you need to make sure that the actual query itself, that bit of SQL, can run within the, the time window that you choose. Once we've created that, we can call system wait view and put in the name of the materialized view to wait for it to run in this case for the first time. We'll speed things up a little bit because it takes a while and you see it take, took just over 30 seconds to complete. And again, we can write the query from deduplicated posts and we get back the same result. If you liked this video, check out these other two videos up here in our Postgres and ClickHouse series.